Transistors are the most important electronic part, but not every transistor is the same transistor. There are two groups, the bipolar junction transistor and the field effect transistor. To understand transistors in general, we will start with the experiment. I will show you both and you tell me where they are different and where they are equal. Do you see anything? May I can help you. Okay, to be serious, there is no difference you can see. But you can see what they have in common. And this is that they both have three pins. And what you can't see is the principle how they work. Between two pins is a variable resistor and the third pin is controlling this resistance. So far, so easy and true for both. To differentiate transistors in the schematic, we are using different symbols. And to make it a bit more complex, there are even two subgroups for each type of transistor. So for the bipolar junction transistor, there's the NPN and the PNP transistor type. Did you see the errors? No, not here, in the symbol. The name comes from the silicon doping. Negative, positive, negative. But for us, too easier to remember, we say not pointing in and then we directly know it's the NPN transistor. The names of the pins are base collector emitter or just BCE. On the field effect transistor side, there are also two types, the N channel and the P channel. And again, the arrows are the indicator for the type. But here we use a different memory hook to remember. The N is the notch and the P is the peak. The name of the FATS pins are Gate Drain Source or GDS. Okay, let's make life a bit more easy. In the subgroups the transistors are working the same way, only that the current is flowing in the other direction. So we reduce it to the NPN type and we will take on the FAT side, the N channel FAT, because I think they are better to compare and let's proceed with them. Okay, enough symbols. Let's look how the bipolar junction transistor works and compare it with the FAT. The resistance between the collector and the emitter on a bipolar transistor are controlled over the base current. So we will call it current control. And that's the way how it works. We have on one side the base current and we have exactly the same current on the collector side but with a fixed amplification called better. And that you can read out of your datasheet. It's the same like inhaling a bag. I can use my breeze like the base current and do it like this. Or I can use my breeze like a base current and open a channel and do it like this. And I'm done within one or two breezes. Now we want to control our resistance. The way we do this is that we add a resistor in front of the base and have a voltage supply and that gives us a current through the resistance. But there's one thing to remember. The junction between base and emitter is like a diode. So no matter what current flows through, you will have a voltage drop of around 0.7 volt. And with that knowledge, we can substrate it from the voltage source and calculate our base resistor. That the transistor behaves like a diode is the reason why you should not directly connect the battery to it. It will burn away. But is it really catching fire or is it just a theory? I never tried it, so let's do it together. Okay, complete fail. Those old housings die really boring, so do it again with SMD. Sure. 
this is what's always happened. If you want to destroy something, it's completely stable. So do it again, but this time like in Hollywood. Okay, now we know it's not burning every time, but it's damaged, so we have to use this resistor. Let's go back to the whiteboard and finish the schematic. If we connect now a resistor as a load between our collector and another supply voltage, we can control the current through this load by adapting the voltage at the base or the resistor before the base. Okay, that's not the way how we use it today. Then we would have to use transistors like that one here and... Okay, yeah, this is not a transistor, but it was the only old part I found in my box of useless old stuff and I thought it's looking nice. Uh, hey, look at me like this. I know you also have a box where you hope that you can use part of it in some times and it will rest your life or whatever. Okay, here's one from Wikipedia, but the reason is why we don't use it is that we have a high power dissipation when we do it like this, because we have a voltage drop and the load current over the transistor, so that will heat up the device and this will force us to use housings like this. Today we just use it as a switch to turn it on and off and this gives us those little sweet housings. But now comes the question. What is the difference to the field effect transistor? The answer is easy. The field effect transistor is voltage control. So this means I have to adapt the voltage at the gate pin. And with this voltage I can charge the gate. But different to a bipolar transistor we don't have a diode. We have something like a capacitance between gate and source. And depending on the charge, which is nothing else than the current multiplied with the time, we turn on or off the fat and this is happening at normally 3.5 volt this is what we call the Miller plateau or just a plateau and after this voltage the fat is starting to turn on and if we reach a voltage at around 10 volt the fat is 100% on and this we will call RDS on so it's the minimum resistance we can achieve with this fat in our schematic we have now to connect our supply voltage to the high side pin of the load and the low side pin to the drain of the transistor and then we connect the source pin to the ground. Now you're probably wondering why I connect the drain to the load and not the source because it would make more sense. The answer is easy. We are using an AND channel fat and the AND channel fat is the negative one, so it's in the other direction. The train is in the logical way, something like the source. Now you can say, okay, let's just turn it around and use it the other way. Yes, you're right, but there's a diode in parallel. So what is happening is that you have something like a reverse current protection or something like this. So as long as the fat is off, you have the diode active. And when the fat is on, you have the resistance of the fat, so it's not really switchable than off direction. Okay, that was a huge amount of theory. Now ask the important question, where to use what? The bipolar junction transistor is always a winner if you want to switch on and off things directly out of the microcontroller. So an LED or something else for communication which has a low power demand you go with the NPN transistor. If you have a high power demand like a motor or a battery, you have to go with a MOSFET. But you have the disadvantage that you need a special voltage supply in most cases. Or you use a logic level transistor, but this don't give you the big advantages. So if you need high power, think about a level switcher and a MOSFET. At the end I have one last tip for you and this is how you can use two components to build up a current source and this will bring your knowledge about bipolar transistors from here to somewhere there. So don't miss that one and see you there.